Okay. Uh, so formally we start the today's session. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is uh, introductory live session on Apache Spark in IBM Cloud. We understand this is new technology. You have to learn a little bit before proceeding to a major assignment in Spark. And it's very important to say that most of the things we will be doing today and saying today are already in the assignment in more compact form. But we just want to stress because already we see some experience we didn't anticipate and it's not what, of course, you as a student would like to happen to you. So very important. We are going to go again to all the reminder. So they appear in also in recording, not only in writing. We are going to talk about the Spark environment, how to use it, and how to ask questions for assistance. With us today is Elena. She is who is providing assistance to the help desk. She is a TA for the class and is specifically assigned to Data 650. So she is the one who is going to do a demo in the Spark tutorial after we finish this uh, general, very general part of the way of our agenda, how to use the environment. And um, uh, we are going to do some, um, she's, uh, some Q&A session at the end because already some people have started working in the assignment, even though it's due in about a week from today, uh, which is good thing. I understand that. Although I don't know how people manage to read the assignment reading and proceed to the assignment, but the, everyone is organized. You are working people, you are organized people, and I understand that you want to work on your own faces. Just uh, we need to make sure that everything is the way it has to be because these are engineering tasks and they have to be uh, performed and completed in the order they are given. Otherwise, they don't work. And we don't want people to get frustrated. We understand you are going to learn. Uh, here, but the learning should be not, uh, let's say, not unpleasant experience. So with no more, I proceed to the next step, and then I'm going to give um, the presentation to Elena to do the demo. So this is all repetition. This is in the classroom, how to ask for help. When you ask for help, it's very important when you click in the link in the classroom, help with the technology, you select from the drop down menu UMGC virtual lab support. I can tell you some of your requests are going to these different places, which are for different support for different people, which has no clue what we are doing in the classroom. So the only option working for us in the class is virtual lab support, then Elena is going to pick up. And unfortunately, we already have cases here. And this is what, just not following the instruction and the experience is not what is anticipated. So please, please, please follow the instructions strictly the way it is in the classroom. So this slide uh, already repeat thousand times. This has been set in writing or in the introduction session we have. I don't know how many times we have to repeat this, but we already have some of this thing happening. So that's why we are doing this again, that you do not have to uh, deactivate your IBM account. No credit card information should be entered, not to delete the object storage, unless Yelena is telling you to do that. Okay, even uh, so, do not open IBM ticket. IBM doesn't know what we are doing. The only ticket for help you should be opening is through our UMGC support and through the option I just provided, which is um, virtual lab. So, IBM is uh, supporting 
any uh, business customer, but they don't know what our, our assignment are. They don't know what we are doing. We are just using the resources in the cloud. So this is a really no, no, okay? So uh, in addition, we don't share code. Please do not post any uh, graded code in the discussion. And in addition, all these uh, bullet points which are here to, attack to uh, attempt to open Spark not uh, boot in multiple browser, you will be consuming for each browser capacity hour, which you understand the Spark environment is uh, cluster computing. This is a computing power, which is measured the same way your electricity consumption at home is measured, the same way your water consumption at home is measured. This is measured. So uh, the consumption of computer power is very important. You pay attention what you are instructed to do. You have to stop the kernel before exiting the not notebook. And uh, if you do not stop the environmental runtime, when you stop working, even though you, uh, some of you already attempted just closing the browser, okay? You close the browser, but the consumption is continuing because you need actually to stop the kernel before exiting the notebook. Just closing the browser, window doesn't do it and you will end up without capacity hour to work because the cloud uh, environment still is running uh, the notebook you, you started before. And of course, you must not uh, uh, share your work with any current or future student in data 650. This is understandable for all the classes, not only for 650. So, uh, even though this has been repeated, I don't know how many times, and I understand you don't like this, but I have to say it because already it's happening. It's already happening. We are in this tree, and some of these things are already happening. So regarding the environment usage, uh, every user with the account we have has assigned it 10 capacity unit hour, which are named CHU, for each calendar month. That means next month you will get again 10. So it's very important you, do, you select exactly the Spark and Python version, which is selected for our environment. This is Spark 3.2 and Python 3.9 environment. They consume uh, uh, by, uh, the environment consume 1.5 CHU capacity hour. That means if you run the notebook for one uh, hour, that will consume 1.5 capacity unit hour for or from your account. And that's why it's very important you manage your cloud account as better as possible. Even when you are in edit mode, the uh, capacity hour are, um, are consumed. So make sure to stop all active room time before lock out. This is the most important thing to manage the time and to be able to, uh, because let's put it this way. It looks is very limited um, time given for more than capacity hour. Yeah, uh, let me put it this way. To write the instruction, it doesn't take me more than this. And I have to run everything and take screenshot for everything. Elena after me goes and she does the same just to make sure that there is no mistake in what we are doing, you understand? And none of us has consumed more than this. So uh, this is not small amount of time and we have, uh, and we will be working with someone for the next assignment in uh, additional option. So remember that closing the browser, what we are doing in your personal computer, when you are working whatever on the internet, doesn't make it in the cloud. 
cloud doesn't understand closing the browser. Closing the browser means nothing from the, for the cloud environment. You need to uh, to end uh, uh, the running. Uh, you need to uh, end the uh, the kernel. So, with no more, I will proceed to other. I think this is already clear. And here are some term vocabulary term. I'm not going to go to each of them. They are just for your information here because we are going to share the, um, you know, we are going to share the presentation with you. So if anybody is not sure about any of this vocabulary, you can post your question in the chat and between Elena, me and Professor Rosan, we are going to answer the question. And if needed, at the end of the session, when we go to Q&A, session, we will explain any of this uh, vocabulary. But in order to proceed to whatever assignment you need, that is the point we are posting in the assignment. You need to complete the reading. Just starting the assignment step by step, even you think you understand everything, if you don't understand the vocabulary, probably you are going to make mistake. And this is going to be a uh, very unpleasant experience at the end of the day. So uh, completing the reading, knowing what are all these vocabulary, only after that you can proceed doing the work of the assignment, which the first one is what is named Spark Tutorial. Spark Tutorial is very low uh, weight in your final grade, but it's a mandatory thing to understand how to work in order to proceed to the next assignment, which is you are going to do real data science job in data, data science job in, in the Spark environment. The, the real assignment, which is named assignment two, will open for you after you submit the tutorial. So you don't see the assignment yet. And you won't see because if you are not able to complete the tutorial, you are not ready to do anything on that assignment. So that is the way it is. It's not that we don't want to open the assignment for you. This is from pedagogical point of view. That is the way you learn all this uh, concept and working with the technology. You are able to do the tutorial, then the assignment will open for you. And it opens individually. Whoever submitted immediately, the assignment is open and you can proceed because you already did uh, that important part. So uh, I think from here on, I'm giving the word to Elena. She's going to proceed to some other important step in the, in the demo with the Spark tutorial. She actually is going to give the part uh, directly related with the Spark tutorial. Yelena, are you ready? To yes, I'm here. Yes, yes, yes. You should I share my screen? Okay. Uh, okay. If you want, I can stop yes, sharing okay. and you share. Well, okay. Think it's okay. better to show it. I think it's better to show it than go in just with the slides because, yes. And I saw, I was reading the chat, I saw a lot of interesting questions. So, first of all, no, the 10 hours is not through the end of the course because. The, the course does not end until August, right? So you're going to have July and July, you're going to get 10 hours more. Yeah, okay. So let's start from scratch, right? And as you see, I already had, uh, I already created a project as I was testing this assignment. Oops, um, okay. It's going to work, it's going to cooperate. So basically what you do is you need to start, you to start with you create a new project, right? And when you start it, you are probably on this homepage. That's what you see, right? And you go click on create project. What's a project? You can think of it as a container, right? And it contains all your notebooks and all your um, data and etc. right? So I'm gonna go create project. So, and here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an empty project, right? I'm starting from scratch, okay? Now I'm gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call it something like uh, demo, 
let's call it Spark demo. Oops, what's going on? I'm opening up. Okay, project name is gonna be Spark demo. I'm just making Spark, Spark demo, right? And the description is optional, so I'll just skip it for right now. What is this? It's a cloud object storage. It's a location where the data is going to be stored. Because when you upload the data, it has to be stored somewhere, right? OK. So it's going to be stored in the object storage. This is important. Because what bucket is? Bucket is a location within object storage, right? So certain portion of the object storage is allocated for this project, if you will. OK, so I'm going to click on Create. So that what that will do is it will create just a new project. Uh, sometimes it might take you to the, uh, you will may see a screen with a tutorial, sometimes not. But this is, this is a, a project overview page. Well, what is resource usage? Is it just showing you how much you used within this project? It's not what you have used this month. It's only what you have used within this project because don't be fooled here. Some of you might say, ha, ah, I, I can create a new project and get another 10 hours. No, okay, no. So just wanted to tell you, no, no, no. Oh, okay, <laughs> here, assets, right? So that's where, it, in that page, that's where you see what you actually have in the project. The data that you uploaded or any notebooks that you uploaded here, right? So first of all, we can upload the data. I clicked here. Now I have an option, I can just browse. I can just browse, right? And I have here employee attrition file for your assignment. Okay, well, make sure that you don't open the file. You just save it as is. The file from the classroom must be saved as is. This is the file uploaded, right? So where does it actually store? This is asset types, and this is where my file is, okay? My, my file, and uh, if I close this out, I should see, well, it does not show the file size now, but that's a file, okay? Next thing what we need to do is, we've got the data, we need to get what, the notebook, okay? Okay, okay, now, we're gonna, now, now we're gonna get the notebook. So what we do is this, new asset, right? This is this new asset. Well, then in here, you're going to go to the code editor and we're going to add Jupyter Notebook Editor. Now, uh, there is multiple ways to add a new notebook in general. You can uh, create a brand new notebook from scratch, right? Or you can add, upload the notebook from files. This is what I'm going to do. Or you can upload from URL. Or also, there is a site that's called the gallery site and i believe i gave you the link in the last slide and on that side you've got some sample notebooks so and uh in general the sample notebook can be uploaded to your project if you want to okay so just so just know it that option is available however there is no way to write a uh, java code if you will right there is no way to write python code or java code that generates a notebook Okay, now, well, I said it for a good reason. Now, here it is. Uh, Jesus, I'm gonna do this. You can drag and drop, or you can just, uh, or you can just do this one, select. So this is my uh, employee attrition analysis. And when I do that, the notebook, notebook name is gonna be pre-populated, but I can always change it. But now I'm gonna, I'm, I'm about to put myself in danger zone. I almost forgot there is a very important step that I need to do. And what is do you think is that I have to go back to here and I have to select Spark 3.2, Python 3.9. This is an environment that you're gonna use for this assignment, okay? Make sure that you select the correct environment. If you make a mistake here, you're gonna end up burning more hours and making corrections, okay? And also make sure that when you're working on it, this assignment, you're not like distracted because your friend calls you and the clock, the thing keeps on running, your hours keep on running, right? 
So here it is, and it says in here, it consumes 1.5 capacity units per hour. So you know that you selected the correct environment. Now what I'm gonna do next, next I'm gonna do create, right? But here, from now on, I have to be extra careful and pay attention. So I had full 10 hours before I started because I tested that notebook last month. This month just started. So what is it doing here? It's trying to start the runtime environment. And let's see again, it con con the confirmation, it says it takes 1.5 capacity units per hour, right? Okay. All right. See this, it's gonna take a couple minutes, but do not hit refresh, okay? Do not do that. Do not use a browser back button because you can do something that you're not even aware of, okay? So, well, here is the notebook. What is this? So notebook can, can, can say, contains different types of cells. This is a markdown cell. You see this, it has a little heading in here. It has a text and it has what table of content, right? And here up it just image, etc. Okay. So this line would just give you the version. And this line here, it's gonna show you the current time. So that's for you. Just know the date and time when you uh, when you run the notebook, right? So here you read through this. Before you do anything, you need to read through instructions, right? So now, what does it say to do here? Okay. It says to you have to put you have to put your cursor here, right? Now, if you go to your instructions, and I don't remember if I still have it open. Yes, I did. So this is the instructions, right? Over here, you must follow the step carefully because some of you missed the page 11 of the instructions. This part in here. Some of you missed this important part in here. So we don't put the credentials somewhere at the top of the file, right? You don't do this. Where do we put the credentials? Here, right? We put them here. So you hold the cursor here. Now you click on the slide out panel, right? While the cursor is still sitting in the cell, you go here and you do Spark Session Data Frame. Now, attention, if you don't see Spark Session Data Frame, then you may have selected the wrong environment, okay? Some student got this issue before. They did not see Spark Session Data Frame. It means we may have selected the Python environment without Spark. Okay, no. I did that, the code got inserted for me. Next step, important. There are two places here where I need to change this to a one. I need to change this to a one, right? Why? Because the rest of the code is referring to this as DF data underscore one, right? So I've got it twice here. Next step, and I usually copy and paste, but when I copy and paste, I need to be extra careful to make sure that I did not introduce any of the Microsoft Word characters, right? So under this line, I have to put this one in for schema, okay? And for schema true, this one, this one here. And what it will do is that um, when I'm reading data from my file, I want to make sure that the data types are read correctly, okay? So if I don't do this, my data types are not gonna be read correctly, okay? Now, so this one, it will make sure that uh, my numbers are read as a number. They're not read as a character. This is very important because if you, later on, if you're running uh, the command to return the statistics, such as minimum, maximum, something like that, and if you see that your minimum value is larger than your maximum value. This is because you might be analyzing the ASCII values, not the actual values. So you have to make sure that the data is read correctly. Okay, so you want this line of code. Now, what else do I need to do before I actually start running this code? I have to put the bucket number. Aha, uh -huh, what's a bucket? It's a location, object storage location that was allocated for this specific project. Where do I get the bucket number? Well, it's in here, okay? 
uh, you're not going to copy the bucket number from instructions. You're going to copy your bucket number, okay? Well, I've had people who did that from, who took the bucket number from instructions, right? Okay. And you guys just reminded me a couple semester ago, the timer was turned off. So people said, why is the time, why is the hours are not going down? Okay, now, here it is, right? Am I ready to run it? Well, yes. I'm not going to do the exercises for you, right? Because this is your homework. But to do the exercises, you want to make sure that you fully understand the exercises above, right? Because uh, here, what it's doing here, it's taking one of the exercises that was demonstrated for you, and it asks you to run the same exercise, but on a different uh, column, right? So the, the file, the employee data has multiple columns. So here you have an example on uh, one column, and you need to do the same exercise on a different column. So that's basically what it's asking. So make sure you understand the examples above. Another thing is that you need to run all notebook. We're not gonna go down like here and randomly start running this cell because uh, some of these uh, variables, some of it are defined above, right? If you don't run the cells above, you can get, you may get an errors. So now let's see, let's, let's run this. Uh, here, this is a play button. That's one way to run the notebook, right? Okay. This will just show version. I'm not gonna run the full notebook, but I'm just gonna do the first few cells, right? So this is a time. So now, but nobody will be able to submit something from last semester because it's gonna show the date here, date and time, right? So you want to be working with the right version. Last semester was different version, okay? Now, let's see. This is an indication that it's running, okay? This is an indication that it's running. But uh, you want to be careful when you copy something from Microsoft Word. During my testing, I accidentally included a special character. So I immediately received an error. But if you see this little asterisk here, it's a good sign it is running, okay? Because I did receive an error. I was not careful when I copied and uh, it introduced some special characters, okay? Now let's see, it's still a little asterisk. Well, it's gonna take a little bit of time. But what I'm trying to tell you is that first do preparation and then you run it only when you are totally ready to run. Right, so there we go. So here, this just shows you, what does it show you? The first five rows, no errors, right? So you're gonna go through all of this, right? Uh, some of you get error COS undefined, something like that. If you get this error because you start running this cell instead of going and running everything from the top. Another thing is that when you start the new Spark session, you, unfortunately, you have to rerun the code starting from the top, okay? So here, this is where I replaced bucket, okay? So now you know that this is all working. You're gonna be doing uh, this on your own because if I do it for you, then the instructor will have to add me to her grade book, right? I'll get the grade. Now, uh, another thing is that suppose you made a mistake somewhere in the code you would have to rerun the code from scratch. To rerun the code from the beginning, you do this kernel, restart and clear output. Kernel, restart and clear output, and here, restart, clear all output. That will clear all output, right? And then you can rerun it from scratch, okay? It, will take, it takes a little bit of time, but yes, see this, that it cleared all output, and I can rerun it from scratch if I made a mistake, right? So you're gonna do all of that. Uh, I can give you some hints for ungraded exercises because well, for the first ungraded exercise, what you do is that you take exercise six, you take exercise six to start it. Because see this, you've got the salary level and number of employees, right? Who have that salary level. In here, you, oh, you're just adding the department, right? 
So you would have to add this department to the select close of a query and also the group by. Remember, when you do the grouping, the same column, right, that appear, the same non-aggregate column. So aggregate is a sum, average, right? Uh, these columns here are non-aggregate. They both must appear in a group by close. So I'm just giving you some hints, okay? And this one is out of the box thinking because remember that the column attrition value is equal one when the employee left. What happens when you take the sum of that column? Just for you, think about it, okay? I, I gave you a couple hints. That's all. I'm not gonna give you the solution yet, but I gave you a couple hints now. Oh, here it says Python, right? It's right environment. What you also will have to do is this file and you have to download as HTML, okay? This is what you will do with the output. You're gonna download it as HTML, right? And then, well, it takes a little bit of time depending on the browser. Oh, okay. It's gonna put the file in your local downloads folder. Then you open this file in a browser and you have an option. You have several options here. I would probably save it as PDF and submit as PDF. Look at the assignment deliverables. It says that you can submit it as HTML or as PDF. Why PDF? Because HTML sometimes does not uh, preserve the images. But if you run this, you will see that there are some uh, plots, right? The output is going to have some uh, data visualization, okay? So, uh, Probably the, your best option is to put it in a, to save it as a PDF, okay? Now, uh, what else? Almost forgot, I need to go back to my notebook. What am I doing wrong right now? Ah, Gilena is making a mistake here. So, she's not running any notebook, she needs to do stop kernel. And I'm gonna do shut down, right? Now, suppose that I'm done. What can I do to check, to make sure that nothing is actually running. Well, there are several things I can do. This is a project. In a project itself, this is a project that I was just doing, right? I can check I can check myself if there are environments inside the project. This is inside the project. See, there is nothing running inside the project right now. This is inside the specific project. Now, what else you can do is that I think the screenshot is already in a classroom for this. You click here and then you go to the, uh, it's on administration, it's in the administration, environmental runtimes. This page will show you if anything is running in any project. I just use 0 0.4, okay? So what you want to do is that uh, while you're writing the code, right? And while you're doing blah, blah, blah with somebody on the phone, you want to stop this, okay? You want to you want to stop the kernel. Make sure that you're not running. Prepare everything and then run, okay? You need to prepare the code and then when you are ready, run it, okay? Now, well, I'm gonna get to questions shortly. Uh, yeah, ignore this part. You might be thinking, aha, uh -huh, what is this? This is the Watson machine learning. We are not, we are not using it in this class. And I think this will be updated soon too because this is being called from the notebook, right? But in this environment, uh, we are limited to 10, so yeah. Uh, okay, so I have nothing running right now, which is good, right? And you want to make sure that you uh, extract it as HTML right away, okay? When you're not running, what you're gonna do again? You're gonna stop, everything stopped, okay? And I need to conserve hours too, because we're gonna have another session, remember? Well, there will be another session for the uh, demo for the, the assignment too, right? We're gonna, I'm gonna show you more stuff soon. Okay, so uh, do we have questions? Questions yes. about, yes, uh-huh. This is Melissa, can you hear me okay? And trying, okay. This this is Melissa. Can you hear yeah. me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, first of all, thanks so much, um, 
for for this session. Sure. Um, I think it was helpful. Um, I just wanted to back up for a second and and tell you that um, you know I did read all the articles that were and, and the postings. Um, I had to actually. Uh, go away so um, on a on a conference so I had to kind of preload everything uh, for this next two weeks um, early and so mm -hmm. I was reading things um, early in this session mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. um, when the project uh, became open mm -hmm. I didn't have any problem following all of the instructions everything mm -hmm. that you just showed worked fine no mm -hmm. issues um, mm -hmm what uh what happened what what uh, where i am at this point mm -hmm. is it took me um 8.3 mm -hmm. hours to do this uh first uh activity mm -hmm. and um the next assignment is due on june 28th which is assignment yes. two and, and and the professor yes. will talk to you okay i'm I going heard. to talk about this don't get okay, nervous but, i think me. people is not okay. concentrated excuse in me. the technical excuse me. stuff excuse me excuse me no do problem. you mind if i just finish with my question go ahead, go ahead minister talk to go ahead okay thank you um i have 1.7 hours left uh and i know that that is not enough time for assignment two my background is not in setting up other environments and things like that. I would be happy if somebody gave me detailed instructions of how to get more hours um, to finish that assignment, but I just need to have written instructions or to have somebody hold my hand to go through that process. Um, that, that's all I'd like to, to say, thank you. Okay, okay. Melissa, uh, don't worry, you will be a help as well as everyone in this class. Yeah, but, Especially but, because you are going to travel, we are going to talk specifically. The good thing is that you already completed the tutorial. Uh, I ha we have already two solutions for the assignment number two, which is the big one. But first guys, you have to concentrate with this 10 hour to complete the tutorial, which is mm -hmm. plenty of enough. You are just, uh, running if these people have this if the other just concentrate in this and melissa you are in very good shape you already completed the tutorial and still have a little bit remaining for the assignment you will get two options and we will talk about this but okay first, i don't need any special treatment um no, 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 i no. just wanted to make sure that i have um the enough no. hours to be able to finish the second assignment and i didn't see anything on that during the lecture tonight but if you're going to send something on that then that would be great but the lecture is not over and the thing is what uh, kevin's solution is icing on the cake you know what i'm saying it's an icing on the cake so to speak i i was like oh wow i did not know about that so uh, oh, that's great. I don't. I don't know how to do that. So if somebody can show me, that would be great. Well, we will figure it out. Yeah. This is Zoltan. If I may uh, write on uh, Melissa's comments, and I greatly appreciate uh, Professor Gorcheva and uh, Yelena for your empathy. And really, I think what's important is that we fix it for ourselves, but maybe also for future classes. Uh, the communication that came back from uh, our professor was kind of, I felt we were blamed for not reading the instructions, and I did read the instructions. There's like 16 or so pages, and on page 15 at the very bottom, it mentions that you need to log off the kernel, otherwise you burn your time. I think this is a very crucial feature using this platform and i think it should have been the first page the middle page the last page the message before the assignment is sent out so i'm kind of disappointed that we're paying this tuition and we're using a tool that gives us 10 hours uh, of time uh, it is very frustrating it's beyond frustrating and it's quite uh, honestly, very stressful to me. I'm technical and I can understand people who are less technical, it's probably even worse for them. So um, I'm not sure how to uh, do that uh, update to the documentation, but I strongly recommend that it's at the very beginning of this assignment. 
uh, and just wanted to write on something that is, uh, it might be a, a cultural thing. Uh, when Yelena said we can save this document in HTML, but maybe it's not a good idea because it's not going to save the image, you better save it in PDF. Say yeah. it in the instruction to save it in PDF. If there's a pitfall that you, can I finish please? If it's a pitfall that if you don't save it in PDF, you lose the image, I don't want to learn it by making that mistake and then not being able to create that image. I think that the communication from the school, from the professors have a lot to improve in this situation. I'm sorry to be so frank, but this was not a very good experience. So Kevin, let me tell you, I appreciate this. And this is what we are looking, this kind of feedback we are looking. And this is the first time I'm listening something like this. Actually, I uh, ar arrived to this because we haven't had problem. Uh, so many people opening ticket because uh, something is not working for them. So this vary from semester to semester. And if we don't get this kind of feedback, it's very difficult to get to the point. These two points are excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, one question that I have, um, I understand that in the last time this class was held, it had uh, 50 hours and now it has 10 hours. What's happened and is there not a way to get back to that 50 hours? Because I think that would solve all the issues for assignment too, no? Uh, well, uh, I would prefer to finish with the technical material and then talk about this. But you guys, you are very, uh, so maybe Elena, what do you think if I just say what we are going to do and then finish the, the, uh, the purpose of this session is not to talk half of the time about the 50 yeah. hour and about the yeah. 10 hour. Uh, and I think this everyone understand, right? We are here to uh, appreciate the time of everyone. I cannot hear you. I mean, if I had control over it, I would have given everybody 150 hours, but I have no control. No, no, over. no, no. I'm asking you the following. Uh, do you have more on the demo or I can just say the operational stuff, how we are going to go? Go ahead and, go ahead and say operational because I think nobody listened to. Nobody listened. That, that is the, uh, and I understand. I and another that. thing is, guys, speaking of reading, instructors can tell what you access in D2L. That's how it works. Instructors can see exactly which readings you opened, which readings you have not. So, and as well as login history. I'm telling you that. Hint, hint. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think everyone concentrated what was and what is. Uh, what was is, uh, let's put it this way, we are using this environment under the academic initiative and academic initiative of IBM is subject to the business of IBM. The business of IBM changed the trial accounts in May, which is above, uh, above the reach of the academic initiative. I don't know if you understand that. So one thing is the company IBM, which run uh, among other things, the cloud they have, the IBM cloud, with all the resources offered there uh, to businesses. And they've been offering these trial accounts, which we have for uh, as long as I remember, they have uh, the IBM cloud. Actually, this was after we start running this program. They didn't have that in the beginning nobody had it anyway uh, so if the business change his business because they are uh reconsidering the hour the capacity hour the computer power they give to trial account the academic initiative is not able at least at this point to make other agreement with the company because they are just providing what the company does to the academia I have worked with my contact from the academic initiative. I have a full extra hour for each one who complete the tutorial. Nobody is going to get anything extra until you complete the tutorial. Who completed the tutorial, 
uh, the professor is going to look to the screenshot provided in the assignment folder, and then the student will be contacted with the option of extra capacity hour, which are going to be another 10 hour. I want to put everything clear. And this was, uh, let's say, extra, which none of my colleagues in other universities still are getting. We got this. Maybe they will provide to other people. I don't know. We were from the first requesting this, and we got that. So you will have for assignment two another 10 hours, which are not going to be given to you until you submit the tutorial, because we don't want uh, improper use of the capacity hour, because after that, we don't have another solution. And I think you, you should understand what I'm talking about. Then uh, Kevin came with the, uh, the proposal of the container. This is gonna be another option, which we will listen to him and then try to uh, prescribe I, I would say that uh, this is a good option. Let's say you don't need more uh, hour, you can complete with the additional 10 hour, the major assignment, which is totally uh, reasonable. Let's put it this way. Then you have this option about the container. We don't have any uh, assignment related with container, even though this is the paradigm, I mean, any data scientist, data engineer, practically when you get a job, if you are going to work very closely in the direction of, um, of uh, this uh, merge of data scientists with data engineer, all the work is developed in, in container. But uh, you understand that in six credit courses for the time of 12 weeks, if we put also to teach you how to work in container. So we can do one or the other is too much to do both stuff in a single class. Now, as an option to explore or you, on your own, this is perfectly okay. And I uh, highly recommend to do it. Of course, we ha first have to listen to Kevin and try to get by the recording to describe this because it's not going to be enough, uh, I would say, by, by the demo is going to do. Are you going to do the demo now, Kevin? Kevin? Uh, yeah, I can. If uh, Yelena, you're sharing your screen right now, right? Yes. So uh, I think it's clear. Uh, this 10 hour you have are for the tutorial. For the assignment, you will have another 10 hour. But they won't be given to you until you submit the tutorial. OK? And they now won't appear automatically like the assignment appear automatically, you will be contacted by the professor and Elena to get uh, the solution, okay? And yeah. then the option of the container, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have to tell you how happy I am that the necessity put us on this path that we are going to get some splash from container. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Yelena, do you have more on this? Because mm -hmm. nobody was concentrated. Nobody is asking questions. I want the session to be useful. If there mm -hmm. are no questions on the tutorial and everything about the tutorial is clear, then we can proceed to the Kevin presentation. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a question. Who, who is speaking? Andrew, Andy speaking. Okay, go ahead. I just want to find out if you finished working on a project, is it possible to come back and do some editing? Like yeah. you finish working, you close the runtime, and then probably you didn't finish everything. Probably mm -hmm. was, is there a way to save and then come back and then probably do some work again yes. on the same project? Yes. Look, see here, I'll go to projects. This is, where is it here? Projects, see this? Projects, view <laughs> all projects. Okay. And in fact, what you'll be doing in the next assignment, you're gonna be taking the uh, Spark tutorial that you did for this assignment and you'll be adding the, another notebook to it. So see this? This, is, mm -hmm. was, this was my testing one week ago. I can just go in and here and continue, yeah, why not? I can add another notebook here if I want to. I can add more data. Yes, it's possible. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm, sure. 
Yeah. So let me see something else in the chat. Okay. So what I need to click on that, Kevin? Uh, yeah, sorry, I was waiting for everyone to get done. Uh, so on that link right there should be the link uh, to go to uh, the Docker install okay. page. Um, and then okay. you would just uh, select your operating system. What is it doing? Uh, I was just asking for cookies, it looks like. They do. Uh, I would just click not now. For now. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And then um, I just clicked on Docker Desktop for Windows at the um, bottom. Okay, here. Yeah, so this is just installing Docker. And then once you install Docker, you need to pull the container. And then um, Docker Desktop for Windows again. And I hope I don't need to reboot, do I? Oh, you might actually. But um, I can show you the downloads part. And then once you download it, I can, uh, if I, you can make me a presenter, I can show everyone how to. Yeah, rest. I can make you presenter. I, I think it's gonna oh, be better. But okay, uh, yeah. Elena, can you stop sharing, please? But he already has it installed, that's the thing. Oh, he has it installed. Yeah, we, we can get to the point of right before it asks you to restart, and then I can take over from there. Okay. Okay, okay. continue there. Yeah, so it's just gonna um, download and then open okay, it. Open file. Yep. It didn't, it might take it a second. It just like beeped and yeah, so that's the installer. Oh, um, okay, so all you have to do is run the installer and then I can take over from here. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to uh, let me share my screen, let me make sure I'm not oh, okay. giving away the homework. <laughs> okay. So that's going to be doing this, right? Yeah, that's just installing it. And it's going to have to, um, oh. uh, yeah, you just uh, hit OK on all of that. And then after it does its installing, you'd have Darker installed. And then I could show everyone what to do after that. OK. Because this is, OK, unpacking. How long did it take, you said? Uh, the install takes a couple minutes. Oh, okay. So it's not like half an hour thing, okay? No, no, it's only a couple, at least for me, it took a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah. Let's see, how do I share my screen, mm -hmm. share screen? Oh, so should I stop sharing now? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and share because once it installs, it'll just be a matter of using it. Uh, there won't be no more extra setup steps, right? Um, I believe there was one, but it just, gives you a web page to go to, and you would have to um, sign up for Docker, which is just oh. your email. Uh -huh. um, but that's, you know, that's with all the other applications. It's just a free account that you set up. Okay. Okay. Um, can everyone Perfect. see my screen? Yes. Okay, awesome. Perfect. So the next thing, after you have Docker installed, if you open up Docker, uh, that Docker installed, Docker desktop, it's gonna look something like this. Um, I already installed the container, um, but I'm just going to go through um, like the, the start of it. So the container that I used um, is this one. How do I, can I post this in chat? If I can't post it in chat, I put it in my post that I made on the thing. Um, but this is a container that I well, use. Yeah, but yeah. but uh, Melissa, I don't have Mark. I'm on ask. Uh, you, I'm on answering your question right now. I don't have Mark, unfortunately. You don't have what? Mark PC because she's asking if I can make instructions for Mark. I don't have Mark. Oh, Mac. Yeah, I don't have it either. Um, I assume it will be the same Docker. You can install it on a Mac, and the, it should be kind of similar to install it. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm unsure. Well, we um, can walk through together. If you put the ticket in, we can uh, share screen and see if we can figure out together. Yeah. Um, so the container um, that I use, I put it in my post um, and bring you to this web page. Uh, from here, you can see that it has Jupyter, Python, Scala, or Spark stack. So that's all the Spark stuff installed on oh. it already. So we need to take a screenshot of this somehow. Uh, you don't need necessarily a screenshot. I posted the link. Um, oh, but, and it, um, Everybody will not have the chat one. Okay. 
Okay, everybody can copy the link right now from the chat and have it in his computer. Yeah, uh, I posted the Docker link in chat. Can I? Oh, cool. I yeah, can still do there, that. Yeah, it's there. Okay. This one? Is it yeah, the so, one? So this is, is yeah, that's the link to the container, what I just posted. Hold on, I need to get this. Okay, and we have the container and we have the Docker. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Mm -hmm. So once you get to the container page, you just click this button to copy those instructions, Which and then you would open up PowerShell in Windows. Oh. Um, you can do it from command line, but I'm a PowerShell user. Yes. Um, and then you would just uh paste once you have Docker installed, you would copy this, and then paste it into PowerShell. Paste and that, uh, what? Uh, this command right here. It says the Docker pull command. If you click oh, this little icon, okay. uh, it copies it, and then you can go in a PowerShell and paste it, and then uh, hit enter. And that, what that's going to do is download it. I already downloaded it once, so it's not going to oh. re-download. This might take you, it's like four gigabytes, so it might oh. take you a minute to install it. Um, mm -hmm. But then you would have the container. Um, and then the next thing that you would have to worry about, let me go here, save uh -huh. this. Let me. Because, yes, I won't be able to complete the installation right now. It says that you have to restart here. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. it's going to have to restart. Let me close uh -huh. out this. I can do it from scratch. Uh -huh. um, what are you trying to do now? Uh, I'm just going to start the container. So once you run this command, the Docker pull mm -hmm. uh, Jupyter all Spark notebook. So that's just downloading that container onto your machine. What you would run is Docker images. So this shows you all the images you have installed. And then to run the image, it would be Docker run. Um, this is important. TAC P space 888 colon um, 888, yeah. and then the name of the container. So for me, it's Jupyter Allspark Notebook. So what this is doing is I'm running this container, um, Jupyter Allspark Notebook. I'm opening the port 8888 and mapping that to my local port. Um, that's important um, to have that. You don't have to understand why that's important, but that's important so that when you hit enter and run this, you can copy and paste this IP address right here. So the container is running. Uh, it's running in the background. It gives you an IP address. If you copy that and paste it into your browser, it's going to open up um, a Jupyter Notebook. Mm -hmm. And then let me. So every time you have to start a right? What was that? You have to start the container. Yeah, you have to start the container every time. Uh, but the good thing is you can save your files outside of the container so you don't have to duplicate work. So um, right here, I'm going to upload uh, upload my work that I did before. So upload that. And I need to upload the CSV file. Mm -hmm. um, so if you open this up, it's going to automatically have the Python 3 kernel, which is awesome. Um, and then you can run all this code. Um, the only thing that you need to have, so I would take a screenshot of this, oh. is that uh, right here, you need um, to do your import statements. So from pyspark.context import, um, that, what was that? Is it possible to put the code in the chat? Yeah, I can copy. You don't need the pandas. I like pandas, so I use pandas oh. for data frames, but I can post that code in chat. Yeah, so you need to put that at the very beginning above uh, your um, uh, Spark contacts equals Spark contacts. Um, and then the other piece of code that you need to put in is this load data section. Since you're not doing it from uh, a file management system, you're just doing it locally, you would have to read the um, CSV file using uh, the spark.read options and then you set headers to true and infer schema to true. 
Oh, so that's different code, right? Yeah, yeah. It's different code. Uh, those are the only pieces of code that would be different from um, your example. Um, mm -hmm. I finished the tutorial and I was able to get through all of it without any problems. It was just uh, figuring out that I needed to add this line of code and then those two mm -hmm. lines of code. Oh, so those lines of code are going to be in your submission, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm allowed to. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And everything else is the same. I won't go into too much, but like all the other code runs the same. And then for the code that we have to do for our, like the questions and stuff would uh, theoretically, you know, should be the same. It shouldn't be different. Mm -hmm. um, so for this one, it is uh, the same version 3.2.1. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that I noticed was different is SQL. This is running a newer version of SQL. So mm -hmm. towards the bottom gives you a warning message, but it doesn't stop you from running the code. It just oh, tells okay. you that your uh, um, the method that you are that the code was originally written in was written in an older version of SQL. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. otherwise, it should all work. Mm -hmm. So for right now, the warning can be ignored. Yeah. Yeah, the warning can just be ignored. For right now, yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think it's just old SQL syntax that it's worrying you. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, is there any questions? And if um, I need to do like a, a Word document with pictures and stuff, I don't mind doing that. Um, what are we supposed to change on the code, especially the first part? What are we supposed to change, which is different from what Yelena gave us? Uh, yeah, so all you have to do is add this part right here. Okay. Um, and then you have to add this part in the load data section okay. instead of doing That's what you, Elena did. Yeah, it's just those three lines. Okay, That's fine. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I guess when if you share this HTML thing. Uh -huh. I can share all of this. I would take out what like the work I did as well. Mm -hmm. So it would just be, it would look like the... Um, uh -huh. Uh, it would look like the tutorial without my answers, but I have this code in it, if that helps people. Yes, exactly. Yeah, without without the exercise, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I can do a help. Though. It may take me uh, probably mm -hmm. tomorrow or I have it. I no, no, don't have not a problem. No rush, no rush. No rush. Mm -hmm. uh, but with this, I've noticed uh, because it's containerized and you're not... Uh, uh, I believe um, it was one CPU core that was for the um, IBM cloud. You're using your local mm -hmm. um, resources. So it runs as fast as your computer runs. So if you have a good computer, it runs faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's hey, wonderful. Uh, Kevin? Oh, Kevin? Was it? Yes. Um, so does the... I don't really know much about like port numbers. Does the port number matter like based on OS or would it be the same across all OSs? It should be the same across all. So the port number is just because um, they're running Jupyter Notebooks on port 8888. So you have to expose that port um, and map it to your local machine. That's a little nerdy talk, but uh, yes, as long as you're using uh, ports um, 8888, you should be good, at least on Windows. Um, if it doesn't work, um, whenever you look at your IP address, just look whatever this number is and then replace it with that number. Uh, but 8888, I believe, is a typical TCP port. OK, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a containerization nerd. We do it in my office all the time. Mm -hmm. Well done. It's, it can run it for, there is no limit, right, which is great. Yeah, before I stopped it, I think I had it running for like nine hours or something mm -hmm. because I uh, opened it, did the tutorial, made myself dinner, came back. And, and how do you stop it? Uh, to stop it, all you have to do is you can either just exit PowerShell. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then um, it's going to give you a nice error message and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, unlimited time this container. Well, yeah. Not unlimited, of course, the day is limited to 24 hours. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing is, I didn't show you, but when you save it here, it doesn't save it on your local machine. So you have to oh. click file and then download. So if you want to save your work, you'd have to do file and download it to like your local machine. Otherwise, if you close it, your work is deleted because it's only in the container. Oh, so it's going to be deleted if you don't save it? Yeah, if you don't save it outside of the container, when you close oh. the container, it's gone. So you have to save as a notebook. Okay. Yeah, I can show that real quick. Let me just restart okay. PowerShell. Okay, and then you have to upload the notebook again. Okay. Uh, yeah, so... Okay. All right, since I closed it last time, my work isn't here anymore. Um, so I have to upload it again. Um, oh, like but that. how did you launch this container again? Oh, uh, it was just a, that I can post that command as well. Okay, please. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The command is Docker run tech p, and then um name of container. Um, I can see what mine was. I think container should be still the same name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the command I ran. Mm -hmm. um, to save your work, you would have to click on what you want to save, hit file, um, download, and then save it somewhere on your desktop or save, you know, somewhere in your file system. And then if you close it, you would just have to upload it again, which is not that big of a problem. Mm -hmm. Unless you know how to save your own containers, but I won't go that deep into it. Mm. Oh, nice. Wonderful. Yep, Kevin, can I ask a question? Once you open a, uh, your um, workbook, uh, when you work on it and you close out, doesn't it automatically save back to where you opened it from? Uh, so you're saying if I was in here and I made a change, correct, like, like yeah, that, yeah. And if I didn't save it, so if I just closed it, yeah, doesn't it save back to where you uh, opened it from? Well, it's going to give you a nasty message that says save it. So it says I haven't saved my work. Uh, if I ignore that and I open it. That, yeah, then it's it's gone. But you also had the option to save it. Yeah, yeah. You can, so if I just put junk there and I hit uh -huh. this little save icon, it's save. And I can close it and reopen it. And then you, then you didn't lose your work. Uh, so it's, it's still in a file. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you only need to find it at home once and then you can start working on the file. And every time you uh, um, quit the, um, what do you call this? The uh, container. Development environment, the container, then it will yeah. save it to that location and you can continue to work from it. So not exactly. Because I opened it in here, before I close the container, I still need to re-download it. So I need to download, I click see. on it, okay. Okay. and then Got uh, it. replace that file. OK, OK. Yeah, if you don't do that and you close the container, then it's lost. Because, Got it. uh, yeah, you won't get it back, unless you're good at forensics. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kevin, I don't know if uh, if anybody has question regarding this. Uh, my question is regarding the computer power of the computer, of your personal computer. How uh, much memory, uh, speed of the CPU, uh, uh, just rough estimate, minimum. Uh, yeah, so for me, uh, I think memory I have is 32 gigabytes of RAM. And then um, for CPU, I think I'm running a, uh, what am I running? Let me look at. Uh, because, uh, you know, it's important. We don't want uh, people to get frustrated because some people are with computer, not. Uh, I have 16, mine is 16. Yeah, it, it should, mine is 32 and the CPU I have, 
uh, it was my course, eight cores on it. Um, but the container itself, because it's containerized, I believe it's only using, um, can I look? Will it work on uh, 16? Uh, it, yeah, it definitely work on 16. It's only one in Linux, so it only needs like two gigabytes of RAM. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Right, Docker okay. Uh, Yelena, I have a question for, with this. So are you going to be able to provide the same support to the students if we use this system? If I learn how to use it. <laughs> she has to get trained. Uh, I I need to get trained or we'll have to like have a session and try to figure out together. It's not immediately, it's not, uh, but the, uh, let's put uh, everyone is excited and I'm more excited than everyone because I will be honest, I, I wanted for a long time to have something like this in the class, but I never couldn't sneak a, a, a space, let's see, in the material to teach this stuff, you know, because we're teaching one or the other. The two things in parallel is too much. Uh, and, and everybody should understand. So think about now you have the option uh, with extra uh, capacity hour to do the assignment to finishing with the existing capacity hour, um, the tutorial. And if you can do that, uh, if you can, if you need or you want, you have the option of the container, which is awesome. Awesome. Yeah, because see, the thing is, it will take some testing, right? <laughs> Today is the first time I saw it. So, well, it's yeah. gonna take time. That's why I want to tell everybody: just continue the way the instruction are. Continue yes. to work. If you submitted the tutorial and you already have the assignment, just the professor is gonna contact you with the extra hour. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And copy me on the email. I just look in the box section. I see two people in the Ozan section already submitted. Yeah. And in my section, nobody. Um, I'm sorry, Professor Gracheva. Are you asking that if we are finishing the um, uh, Spark tutorial, we need to get a screenshot in order to get the additional hours? Or yeah, this what is, is a it? requirement? This is a requirement in the tutorial. In the tutorial, uh, you are asked if you have uh, fewer hours than 10 to uh, contact the TN. Now, instead of that, please provide a screenshot. I'm going to put this in an announcement. Okay, when we share. I appreciate that. Yes, I appreciate when we share the, the recording, which is going to be tomorrow morning, uh, in sharing the PowerPoint and everything, I will share the additional things you will have to do. You will have to provide a screenshot with um, the available hour. If you already submitted your tutorial, not a problem. I see only two people. This can be done just by text. Uh, not by text. You can send the screenshot by email. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. I will put this in the announcement. And then oh. after that, you will be contacted with the extra hour for the assignment to on mm -hmm. the assignment to. And um, also I, you have this option. If you got the time, you have, uh, I, I highly, highly recommend also trying to do the container. Yeah, um, I looked into the specific image the container is using. You only need two gigabytes of RAM, of RAM to run Linux Arch. Uh, uh -huh. So you'd probably need four gigabytes of RAM to run the entire container. So I would say a uh, minimum of eight gigs on your computer. Uh, Kevin, but I also will have to look for some not very excessive reading because everybody should understand the idea of what the container is. Yeah. What uh, it's not gonna work like a blind person, you know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not, uh, uh, if you have any suggestion of something, be and not extensive because I know there are many resources, but we cannot afford to send three resources to the student in order to understand what container is, how to work with the container and then do that, you know? That's why I didn't have anything about container in this class, you, you understand me. But now the necessity just put everything in our hand. Yeah, no worries. I'll see if I can um, have uh, like a easy 
tutorial document that I used before. Okay, okay, great. And of course, we are probably ELN is going to put something and is going to ask you if you have some not to compile everything together. If you can dedicate some time with her. Yeah, and that, that would be great because, well, that's an icing on the cake because, well, yeah. Okay. I mean, I was looking into other options like checking IBM Cloud, what services we've got, and etc. I was checking all environments that are there. And mm. I, I want to clarify something to everybody. As a future data scientist graduate for this program, you will need to learn to work both stuff in the cloud because today this is the tendency and container is just part of everything. Like Python, Python is part of everything, Python notebook and container. These are two things you need to have under your belt. So uh, we were concentrated in the cloud because this is the first skill employer wants. They want to know if you go to interview in what, how much of cloud, even uh, in the cloud you can work, even very initial, let's say, introductory skill are needed, are required. You must have it. So uh, this is uh, addition. Uh, this is excellent addition to the skill in the cloud. You have been working in the cloud for, uh, for with several things in this program. So I think we are in good path. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Uh, maybe maybe. Uh, quick concern here so in some cases you know like uh, the students leave their work to the last minutes of the submission date right so is would there be any limit or anything for the multiple people connecting at the same time to this system no that is in your computer um Oh, it's in your computer, isn't it? Yeah, if you're talking about the containers, then there's, there's not an issue. If you're talking about IBM, that's up to IBM's resources. Yes. Yeah, containers are, in, uh, of course, uh, services in the cloud, just in different way in using services. It's a different way to use, uh, to do the work. Let's put it this way. But in any case, don't put it until the last minute because you know what happens. Yeah. Don't put it in the last minute. Never. Have it done 24 hours before it's due. I would say 24 hour rule. Well, just in case, because you don't you never know, like thunderstorm, you lost power. You want to be ready for those things. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other question? Well, I don't see other question. The instruction, the additional instruction are going to be put also in writing. So we will share something with the recording and then this uh, instruction without the container solution of the Spark tutorial is gonna come later. So you have plenty of time to work with the existing capacity hour you have and all of uh, mm -hmm. everything we have talked today. If no more question, I think we will be ending the recording and uh, I think the recording is going to be strange for the people who didn't um, didn't participate because actually this is like live interactive section session, which is okay. It's not what uh, some people expect, like a lecture. Somebody is telling them what to do. So this is live interactive session, which is totally okay. Okay. Okay, I'm stopping the recording.